Hello, welcome back to the channel. In this video I want to talk about an image that I took from St Mary's Bay which is near Dover. I live in Kent in England and Dover's only 30-40 miles drive from where I live and I went down there on one very stormy day and I want to talk you through how I got from this image to this image in Lightroom and also using Photoshop. Anyway, let's get on with it. Okay, we're in Lightroom now, and I've got the two images I'm interested in working on the screen. The first one is a long exposure, and if you look carefully, the sky is all blurred, and this was a 20 or 30 second exposure. The sea is pretty well blurred out and smeared out as well. Um, that one I want for certain pieces of the information, and this image was a, a two second exposure, and the sky's got much more texture and detail in it, and also the waves are showing a bit more interest than just flat, smooth. So the two images are going to be opened in um, Photoshop. So I'll select both of them and then say right click, edit in, open as layers in Photoshop. Photoshop fires up, not very quickly on my computer unfortunately, it's not the fastest in the world. So we'll just have to wait a few seconds and it's loading the first layer and the second layer here. And that's completed. So if I turn off the first layer, you can see the detailed image is the bottom one. And if I turn off the bottom one, you can see the smeared one is the top one. So I need to cut through from the top one to the bottom one to get the information that I want from each of the images. So the way we do that is first of all select both layers as such and then go into Edit, Auto Align Layers, Auto, yes. That will make sure that the two images are completely aligned and you can see they're not perfectly aligned so it's now made them perfectly aligned hence these little areas of sort of um, hashed out area where the images don't quite match together properly. Anyway, I'm not bothered about that at the moment. What I can do is I can pick up the eraser tool which I've already got selected and with that I want to cut away at the image in the top frame which is the long exposure one. So if I start to erase that part of that image you can see the sky with detail from the image below is coming through. What I want to do is also um, reduce the brush size because that's a little bit on the large size so let's take it down something a bit more meaningful. Uh, that's about it. And what I want to do is pull back some of the information in the water. So if I cut through from the top image I'm getting some of the de detail in the water coming back which wasn't present in the, um, the lower image so just and I only want to go as far as this breaking wave here so it doesn't look too untidy just clean that up a little bit as well and now I've got the details in the water plus I've got this long area here of slow captured water from the long exposure so I'm reasonably happy with that so what I'll do is I'll crop it um, using the cropping tool which is this one and we'll we don't need all of that extra detail so I'll just ensure that I've lost all of the bits which um, are not right so we'll say yes to that so that's now cropped what I'll now do is merge that image down, flatten the image and now I can close this and it'll put that image back into Lightroom and lo and behold the image appears in Lightroom here and that's the image that I've now uh, performed what I wanted to do in um, Photoshop. The next thing to do is to clone out some of the um, information in this picture that I don't want in it. I don't want these little houses and things on the cliff edge here because they're distracting. The owners might disagree and quite prefer their houses to stay there, but I don't want them to, so I'm just going to get rid of them. And that cleans the image up. And also these beach huts are a bit distracting, so I'm just going to get those out of the picture as well. And lo and behold, they've gone pretty well. There's also a blue sort of plasticky thing here. I think it's some sort of port or something. That can go, or at least most of it can go. So we'll get rid of that. In fact, I'll re-edit that and put that as the source for the, uh, the copy. So although we know those have disappeared, 
the image itself is still pretty clean and tidy. So the next thing I'm going to do is actually just basically get the levels and things correct, which seems to be about right. So I start off by using the auto facility and then make adjustments as I see fit. So that's got the colour balance right, the blue casts come off. I'm going to bring the highlights down because I don't want the sky blown out. I'm going to bring up the shadows a bit more and I'm just going to cause the whites to clip, or at least not clip, and I just bring the blacks up so they're not clipping as well. Now that image is now starting to look quite pleasant. Um, I'll probably clone out a bit more of that detail up there because there's still a little bit that look a bit untidy. Until now I look untidy, which we can afford to lose. So that's got rid of that. The next thing I want to do is to um, increase the contrast in the sky part of the image here so that um, it's actually more moody. And the way I'm going to do that is to put dehaze on and use the painting tool, paint in the sky. And you'll notice there's a sort of a purpley haze come onto the sky. So what I'm going to do to get rid of that is to take the saturation down, make the sky a little bit less purpley blue. And I'm also going to bring the clarity down on the sky very slightly just to sort of cover up the noise. And I've just noticed I've actually got a dust spot or two here which dehaze normally brings out. So let's just clone those out so they're not awkward and embarrassing. So I've got the sky pretty much where I want it to be. I'm just going to put a little bit of um, brush stroke over the sea um, and a smaller brush stroke just to sort of dehaze that a little bit as well. So I bring a bit more contrast into the sea and I'm going to do that into the waves as well. Okay, that's now got a bit of a blue cast to it, so I'm going to bring the colour temperature up a little bit on that um, and probably take the dehaze down a fraction. That looks reasonable. I don't mind that image so far. The next thing I'm going to do is to go into the um, noise reduction under the details tab and turn on noise reduction because it was quite a high ISO this picture was taken at 400 it says up here and I know my Sony's are not very good at high ISO when it comes to introducing noise so let me flatten that image out a bit and get rid of some of that noise. I'm also going to sharpen it but I'm going to mask it quite heavily by bringing the mask up so only the edges are sharpened and I think that noise reduction has been a bit too aggressive because my computer is quite slow it doesn't do it as soon as I make the changes to the sliders it takes a while and there's some graffiti here which I'm finding a little bit offensive so I want to get rid of that so we'll use the clone tool and we'll use it in healing mode rather than cloning mode and what I'm going to do is if I can ever find the mouse again make it smaller make the cursor smaller and just put I'll reclone that part and it'll hopefully find something similar to use as the source. It has but it's not found quite what I wanted so I'll move it to part of the same piece of wood and the one underneath I'll do as well. This marks of tar on here I'm not interested, I'm quite happy for those, it's the graffiti that annoys me seeing things like that. So we'll put another computer's working quite hard as my cursor's really quite slow. So let me create, I'm hoping it's creating that. This is tiresome, it really takes ages to do this sometimes. I never used to, but I think it's because these files were all 60 megapixels. Um, it's just magically reached a, a cut-off point where it behaves worse than it ever has in the past. And I'll make the source of that bit somewhere over here and yep that does happy with that turn those off so the image is pretty much and close to what I want it to be I don't think it's level I just um, criticize myself because I think it's got a slight tilt on it so I'll crack that now and we'll do that by making sure the horizon is flat well, it's only a fraction of a degree out but nevertheless it needs to be right I'm going to crop a little bit in on the right here because I don't want the end of that fence to appear there and I will probably bring it in a bit more as well. 
and I think that's probably a nicer crop about there. So that, that's doing pretty much what I want. And the next thing I'm going to do is introduce a bit of vignette. About that much should do. And that's looking pretty close to what I want the image to look like. So I'm not unhappy with that. I might do a little bit of um, dodging and burning here on this cliff face. Um, and by that, what I mean is I'm going to probably take the shadows down a bit, take the highlights down, bring up the whites a little bit. And I might do that on this groin as well, just to sort of give it a little bit um, more impact on the image. So I'm happy with that now, I'm quite content with that, so I'll actually um, export that as with previous. And now that will write a file into my folder where I write all my exported files and it will appear on the video in a minute. Now the next stage that I want to perform with this image is to turn it into a black and white high contrast image. So the first thing we need to do is turn the saturation off. And that's not for a tool, that's actually for the whole of the image. So we've turned it into black and white. We've lost a little bit of detail in the, um, the woodwork here. So I'm just going to increase the shadows a bit, bring it up. I'm going to increase the contrast helps the sky look more yeah, impressive. And I'm going to ensure the whites are actually pretty close to being blown out, which is about there. And we'll just bring the blacks up a bit more as well. Okay, I'm reasonably happy with that image. I think that's the end point, so I'll export it a second time in this form, so I'll show you both the two exported images, the one before it was black and white and the one after it was black and white. So on with the rest of the video. Okay, well, that was the edits, and you've seen the images. Um, what I'm going to do now is just wind up and say thank you very much for watching. I hope you found that informative. Um, please leave comments in the section below, and if you like it, please give it a thumbs up, and subscribe if you would like to see more of my content. Thank you very much for watching.